All right, the next thing we want to do is the pop-up move needs to respect a bit of the ball hit speed stuff. So that's the defend ability. So it should be our force here. Hit multiplier. Oh, well, I guess it kind of works. We have the direction, the output velocity is set to the reflection. Otherwise, we have the up force. Yeah, I guess we need to, instead of having all this stuff here, we kind of need to have this Go into all the rest. So we need this up force. Multiply down. Alright, I guess this thing actually needs to be multiplied out. Yeah, the defend hit's a little bit strange in that it does a lot of different things. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think that'll I think that'll do it. Not like this? What? <laughs> What's going on? Is everything all screwed up? This uh this function right here is probably the most fucked up thing that we've got. We, it's just this mess of just trash. And, yeah. Fun times. I'll clean it up eventually. Right, let's make sure I didn't screw up the pop up at all.
Very good. Oh, the password thing? Yeah. Yeah, the password thing is just... That's just what happens when you use untyped languages. It's like, oh, sure, you can pass that over. That's not a problem. Passing a function and then casting it to a string? Oh, hell yeah. The password is totally the contents of the trim function in JavaScript. That is the password that we are using for our game. Yeah. All right. So I think ball hit speed would pop up. Should be done. Um, has sudden death. Don't need to worry about uh, team indicators. Well, all right. So this would be interesting. Should I actually throw in some team indicators at all? I don't know. Okay, so let's do the uh, stealth nameplates and crouch, crouch hides name and stealth crouch. So what the those will do is it'll mean that you don't draw if you are crouched, if you're on the other team. <laughs> okay, so what this does is, so stealth nameplates to start with. So if you're on the other team, we don't render your name. All right, so stealth nameplates. It's going to be in the player controller. Uh, I mean, player logic object. Okay, so we have an actor that is following us. So basically, what we want to do is stealth nameplates, or if you are on the other team, to create nameplate. So if created nameplate is true, don't do anything. Uh, so I think it's set for team. Yeah, set team colors is probably it. So let's do a local variable here, which is going to be on local players team. And uh, so if our team, yeah, we'll get our team and all that. So Actually, we can just set this in line here. Easy enough. All right, so stealth nameplates means that nameplates are always off for the other team. So So 
So if stealth nameplates is true, then we are going to grab our Do we have our nameplate? Or is our nameplate actually looking at us? Okay, so it looks like the nameplate can just reach into the player and figure out what it's supposed to do from there. Okay, I probably just completely fucked everything up here. Alright, looks like I didn't. So I don't really like blueprint stuff for some of this development. It's just sometimes it's just real cumbersome. Yeah, I haven't done any of the stuff in. I haven't done too much in Python. Like I've I've done some tool work in Python, but I've also found that after a while, Python becomes kind of a graveyard. Uh, but that is probably a, uh, a symptom of all the code being basically tools code. And tools code ends up getting pretty stagnant pretty fast. Okay, so we need to get a few things. So get local player proxy is valid. Get team. And uh, our player proxy. So I don't know. I, I'm not really a super fan of Python because of a lot of that stuff. 
but that's probably just because of what I've been using it for has not really been the right tool for the job. Okay, so what is the definition of stealth nameplates? I think it's just we just don't render them. So none of this matters, I guess, but this might change at runtime. So stealth nameplates would be the other team's names don't show up, or would it be your names don't show up? I think it's that the other teams don't show up. And we want to uh, see if we are crouched. So that's like. This is going to be player proxy. This will be what we get followed actor. And we want to see if this guy is crouched. You're forced to use it by Blender. Well, that's not the worst thing for code, for plugins and stuff like that. Like, if I was gonna make a language for plugins, I'd probably, I'd probably use Python. I'd use Python or JavaScript. Probably JavaScript if I had a choice, since you can run JavaScript in just about anything, and Python too, but. At least uh, with JavaScript, you wouldn't have to worry about too much compatibility crap. With Python, it's like, well, what version do you have? What do you support? Well, we don't, we don't fucking know. Are you on Python two or three? Well, uh, yeah. depends. All right, so if our followed actor is not that, we want to like get movement controller. I want to like is crouched. Okay, so if we've got all this afterwards, we can actually do like GM stealth, stealth crouch. Okay, so if you are on the same team as somebody else. All right, so if local player is on our team, then we're we're fine. So if local players on our team is true, we don't do anything. Otherwise, if stealth nameplates is true, we want to uh, invisible this thing. So let's see, we've got our text render and our sprite material. Basically, we want to set, I guess we can get just get self. Set visible. Set actor hidden in game. Yeah, we'll just toggle that on and off, I guess. Otherwise, if stealth crouch. 
Uh, and player is crouched. Ugly. We'll snag our variables, and then we'll actually use them. All right, we'll see how this works. It's really only calling C++ DLLs. Hmm. <laughs> Rip apart Blender to <laughs> do it yourself. They're gonna blend the Blender. I see how it is. Okay, so uh, Stealth Crouch is something that... Uh, and Player is Crouched. Alright, so let's make sure that our nameplates aren't like completely screwed. Looks like they're working properly. So let's uh, enable stealth nameplates to start with. Yeah, well, hopefully at least Blender has good documentation on how to do the plugin stuff. Because I know one of the biggest issues I have with tools code is when there's not a good explanation for stuff. And then you end up having to, like, iterate over objects in the global namespace to figure out, like, what functions are even available and kind of make your own documentation by just brute forcing, like, what functions even exist and printing stuff out that way. Because that's what I had to do with a lot of the stuff uh, for Harmony for the export pipeline was just undocumented variables and undocumented functions because their documentation was crap. And I shouldn't say was crap, I should say is crap because it is still crap. I mean, they still can't tell you how fucking wide something is in pixels. All right, so this is stealth nameplates, so what we should see is only nameplates for our fellow compatriots. Are they always going to go after the same ball? All right, so I don't see nameplates for the other player, which is what we want to see. Yeah, so no, no nameplates there. Let's switch teams and make sure that we're still doing stuff here. 
I did not actually switch my own team. That'll do it. So, can I see blue people now? No, I can't. What we have open it was effects like player nameplate. Well, at least there's that then. Okay, so what's going on here is the player's nameplate changes. Um, I guess we can just remove that optimization then. Because we're going to be changing stuff every frame, so why the hell not? Hello, Kento. You're at work? Well, hopefully you're having fun at work. Looks like I set things to white. So I'm blue. I should see blue nameplates. Yeah, but I need to I need to fix this because our default team should be default value of none. Okay, so we should see only red people. Yeah, okay, we can't see them now. Let's switch to the blue team. Okay, we can see everybody. Uh, we can still see everybody. Uh. <laughs> oh man, uh, no, I picked I picked the handle ambient energy back when I was in like elementary school. Like that was my first the actual handle that I like to use. Uh, there, there were actually two handles. Um, I went with ambient energy. The other, the other option was uh, uh, Super Saiyan Goku Four, but that was taken all over the place, so I settled for ambient energy. That's that was my naming uh, reasoning. Alright, so we got stealth nameplates working properly. Let's do the stealth nameplates, uh, the stealth crouch only.
Yeah, good choice. <laughs> That would be pretty cringe today. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it was cringe back then, too, let's be honest. But when you're in elementary school, there's, like, a different level of cringe where it's just, like, you know, you're not, like, telling people you just, like, went to the bathroom and that you're proud that you washed your hands with a big smile on your face. You're just, you're actually, like, okay, you're you're one of those people. You're, you're a weeb, but you're, like, you're 10, so, like, that's okay. At least you're not... You know, dragging around a stuffed animal or some shit. You don't have, like, 20 invisible friends and talked about things that people shouldn't know about when they're 10. I don't know. Meetings can be good or bad. Like, a, an actual productive meeting where you get shit done and don't, like, waste a bunch of time and, like, finish it and maybe have some time just to bullshit with, you know, people at work. Because most of the time, people at work are fun to talk to. Because they're people, and people who are working together usually kind of have common goals and interests. So it can be a lot of fun, but some meetings just, Jesus Christ. It's just like, this is a waste of my fucking time. Okay, so what should happen here is... I'm going to actually boot up a couple more clients for this. When I crouch, I should become invisible. My nameplate should be invisible. He sounds insulted now? What? <laughs> Everyone's insulted. All the time. Alright, let's get those clients rocking around. Okay, so the other thing we want to do is we want to make that guy totally invisible. I think just like we'll keep we'll keep the red dot, but we'll make him just invisible when he when he's crouched. Or we should make him fade out or something. Probably make him go to like a certain opacity to like. I mean, just removing his nameplate's probably enough when you're in the grass and you're already there, but we'll see. I should experiment with other things. All right, so if we go to our player object, logic, player object, this would be like, if you are crouched and all this, then fade out at the end of it. So let's make a uh, stealth mode. Uh, stealth settings. Uh, we can't do an opacity because this guy is a masked sprite, so we could turn off his outline or do some other crap. So we're just going to have to like disable him entirely, um, which isn't awful. So are the other things... Stealth teams. Um, 
Stealth teams, I think I was meaning to do a little bit more than... Yeah, I think stealth teams is... The other team is completely invisible unless they're attacking or something like that. Alright, so stealth crouch, and let's just blur. Alright, so stealth crouch is true, and uh, get movement is crouched. So the other thing we're going to need to do is get local player proxy, get team. Yeah, we're also going to have like is dedicated server. We're just going to. If we're a de dedicated server, just who cares about all this stuff, just get out. So if we're the same team, we'll do that. Why don't we just also have this crouched? So we'll collect all our variables to start with. And then we'll set our visibility as appropriate. Hello, tiny blip in history. You're new to Unreal. Which one do you recommend to learn, C++ or Blueprints? Uh, well, it completely depends on uh, the scope of the project and why you're using Unreal. So I'd ask, how big is your project? And are you looking to make a complicated game, kind of? out of the box or you're just learning wanting to learn Unreal or stuff like that. Because I would say if you don't learn the C++ portion of Unreal uh, there are things that you just won't be able to do in Blueprints and you'll have to do some massive work around sometime and that could be that could be really frustrating where if it's like ah if I just had the C++ set up properly I could go change this one thing and expose this function that this forum post says I need to make public that's private or I have to wait until you know 4.19 or something. So you don't need to learn a whole bunch of C++ I'd say but you if you're gonna do a lot of blueprints but you at least should get get a compiling in like Visual Studio so you can kind of dig in there and maybe change a few few things on the surface. Okay, so what I want to do is, so we got if it were the same team, we got if we're crouched. Um, 
So we want like GM Stealth Crouch, uh, which we already have there. So we have GM Stealth Teams. And I think we need is performing action. There's another thing here. All right, so I have is acting. And we'll need to throw that over here. Yeah, you're not going to you're not going to write a C++ game. I mean, you're not going to write an Unreal 4 game without using blueprints. Right, like that's just not going to happen unless you really hate yourself for some reason. So I think the question is more of should you compile the engine from source yourself and have the C++ available for you to mess with or not? Because if it's like, well, Blueprints or C++, it'd be like, I, I don't think there's really a good either or. It's... Either you're doing all blueprints and no C++, or you're doing blueprints with some C++. Yeah, maskets out there might might want that, yeah. Alright, so we just care about stealth teams, stealth crouch. Alright, so if we are... If stealth teams are on... Alright, so if we have stealth teams and we are... And we are not acting. Then we are going to set our visibility to false. So we're not supposed to be visible. Otherwise, if we are... Yeah, if we are the same team, we will always be visible. So... If we are the same team as the local player, always set visibility to true. Otherwise, if it's stealth teams and all that, set visibility to false. If um, Otherwise, uh, we'll need stealth crouch, and we are crouched. You saw a blueprint tutorial and a bit confused with the blueprint approach. Uh, well, what's confusing about it? The that it's kind of this weird flow graph sort of, you know, where you're dragging pins around, and you know, you're like, you know, this is this is code, right? Or this is JavaScript, so it's questionable, um, but it's you know, like doing text and all that stuff versus this kind of Fisher Price, what is a visual editor, you know, big stupid buttons that um, appeal to three year olds and uh, designers, I guess. And so, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of annoying to get into if you're wanting to deal with text and all that. So, but it's really nice in some respects. Like the whole blueprint system is really great for, uh, especially doing things like visual effects and things like that, and combining things. It can be real. It can be real nice to just be able to slot stuff in there and do that. You're not used to the flow-based structure. Yeah, it's. Uh, but if you're trying to get into games or anything else, there. Uh, th this sort of visual editor is the future of pretty much a lot of game development so I don't think you're gonna get away from it so best to bite the bullet and um, smile and say you like it alright so if our if stealth crouch and we are crouched is true we're gonna set visibility to false otherwise we're gonna set visibility to true Yeah, the other thing that's nice about all the 
Blueprint stuff is you don't have to compile your code over and over again in C++ land, and it actually can be compiled uh, blueprints into C++ later. So there's some there's some nice iteration time stuff. Well, the real work still gets done in code, I think. Because visual editors are nice for kind of these high-level conce concepts, but visual editors do break down after a while. Like, a lot of the mathematical formula stuff is, I think, much easier to read in code. And a lot of this stuff in code is real compact and simple. And, um, yeah... So I, I think there's a place for both. All right, so stealth crouch, stealth teams. All right, so we'll do that. And what we want to do is we want to have the nameplate follow this as well. So we need stealth teams. So we want to go to our effects, player nameplate, yeah I guess it's basically if uh, stealth teams is true here then we only want to know if the player is acting. Um, so I guess we would want to snag the flipbook component off of this and see what it is, but that seems pretty hokey. Is there a better way to do this? Like get the logic object and call is performing action. That's a logic control component. All right, so stealth crouch and player is crouched and get is performing action, not cool. Otherwise, if stealth teams and player is performing action, Nodded. Kind of arg. Yeah, and some of this logic could definitely be easier to write in C++. All right, so stealth teams is true. Hide if we're not doing anything. Otherwise, we're falling back to crouch actions. Okay, let's see how this works 
at all. So let's make sure that our character, now we're not calling this thing yet. All right, let me go back to my logic object and actually call this function inside of our event. All right, cool. So did we turn on stealth teams? We just have stealth crouch on. Okay, so I should be able to boot up a couple of clients here and see what they look like. All right, Cakes, thanks for sticking around and having opinions. And have a good night. Yeah, the only visual editors I would think would be in Unity would be some of the animation tools and some of those other things. But they're not, as far as I know, like Flowgraph sort of nodes. Uh, Lumberyard, though, and I think CryEngine have a big, big system for that sort of stuff, though. So he can disappear, but um, the is performing action is not always doing what I want. All right, so I think I want just like a a different function here for is performing action, but um, what category is is performing action under? It's under movement. Let's duplicate this and do is. Um, is breaking stealth. How about that? And let's just say if an ability is used this frame. Have a big or there. And whatever, we'll just have two return notes because I don't care that I could do it sooner. Alright, so is performing action, we want to get rid of that and do is breaking stealth. Uh, 
Alright, if... If is crouched... Alright, maybe this is some of it. If is crouched and um, is acting is false, so not acting. Okay, so that might be it as well. Let's go to that nameplate. So it's going to be... It's breaking stealth. And if um, player is crouched and performing action is not true. Alright, so if these are both true and not performing action, hide. Okay, yeah, I think I've got it right. Yeah, I'd, I'd grab the, the code for Unreal anyway, just because what if there's a gap in the documentation for the Unreal systems, you can always just look through the code base for where they implemented things and see if anything is anything is implemented that you might be able to look at. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> you can see the. Uh, I'm not sure how, how how well you can see that, but um, I'll jump down here. So if I'm the if I'm the blue guy, I'm crouched. Then all the <laughs> all the other guys see is my my dot coming around until I act and then I'll I'll show up for just like a second That's pretty cool. I like to. Of course, as soon as we do something like that, I know the first thing Adam's gonna want to do is like, I want like a ninjutsu puff, puffball animation going in there. I'd be like, yeah, probably. All right, so let's turn on stealth teams and get the ball number back to reasonable. Yeah, I'm not a fan of YouTube tutorials or any of that stuff. I'm a fan of just digging into the code and reading the documentation.